Okay, fantastic. So we'll go ahead and get started. Again, uh, like I said, my name is Sarah Wanger. I'm the Director of Admissions for Kelly Direct Online MBA and MS programs. And today we have some really special guests here uh, to talk about the experience of being a female MBA candidate in the Kelly Direct program. Uh, so we will be joined by a representative from Forte in just a little bit to tell you more about what it means to uh, have access to Forte resources while you're in the Kelly Direct Online MBA program. And then we have some uh, representatives from our Women in Business Student Leadership Association. So I'll introduce you to those folks here in a little bit. First, I'd like to introduce you to Megan Reese, and I'll let Megan tell you a little bit about herself and her role with Kelly Direct. Hello, thank you, Sarah. Uh, like Sarah said, my name is Megan Reese. I am the Associate Director of Interactive Recruiting. I will be answering all of your questions today as they come in. So please use that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and send me your questions. I will also share some of those questions at the end of the presentation with our panelists to discuss. Wonderful. So let's move on to the next slide and tell you just a little bit about Kelly Direct. We're only going to spend a, a little bit of time here. We have lots of other webinars that go into detail about our program, but just to provide some grounding for you today, our program is a 54 credit online MBA program, and it's uh, kind of separated out into the four buckets that you see on your screen. So three of those credits relate to our Kelly on campus experiences. And that's when you come to campus to do a case study, networking with your peers and your faculty, um, some social time, get to know uh, other folks in the program. Right now, the Kelly on campus experiences are on hold and we're having uh, Kelly on campus virtual experiences in place of those during COVID. 24 credits are related to our core. So the core courses are those that are stationary, kind of the, the core of our program. And that includes both our fundamentals coursework and our integrated core courses uh, that relate to key business concepts within the MBA. But then within the next 24 credits, you can actually specialize. We have seven different major options uh, that you'd be able to choose from. And you can choose a major while you're in the program, or some folks also choose to do a dual degree. So you can do additional credits on top of the MBA to get both an MBA and an MS in a concentration, or you can just choose a major within the MBA. Can't do both, you can choose a major or a dual degree, and we'd talk with you about the best uh, route for you. And then the last three credits relate to global perspectives. Typically our students uh, in non-pandemic times would have done a global or domestic immersion, but we also have coursework that are uh, fully online uh, global business courses. And we also offer professional development courses within that same bucket, one and a half credit courses relating to professional development around career services. Uh, so you can take courses there as well. So on the next slide, uh, we'll go into a little bit more information about that graduate career services option because we get questions around that a lot. So our Graduate Career Services Office is, uh, was voted number one in the world or ranked one, number one in the world uh, for a Graduate Career Services Office, which we're really proud of. Our Grad Career Services offers one-on-one -on -one career coaching to all of our MBA students. So uh, if you become a student in the Kelly Direct program, you get assigned to a one-on-one -on -one career coach. They stay with you throughout the length of the program. They're going to get to know you really well, what your career goals are, and they'll figure out how to help you get to where you want to go. Again, we have those professional development courses, you'll have access to job boards, other online resources. In addition to the graduate career services, and of how else do you network in this program? It's an online program, but we often say it's an online program that doesn't feel like one uh, because you're gonna make a lot of connections along the way. So you're gonna get that one-on-one -on -one career coach. You're also going to have virtual classroom hours. So every week you're gonna have a virtual live session where you'll get together with your faculty and your peers for your course that you're in, and you work on team projects, you do small group discussion. Uh, it's really an opportunity to get to know folks while you're in the program and have a little bit of face-to-face -face interaction on a weekly basis per course. In addition, we have a Student Leadership Association. SLA is what, how we refer to it. SLA does a number of different events every month and there's about 10 associate sub associations, although uh, those change uh, pretty regularly as we have new uh, uh, associations come into being. Um, and those are normally focused in particular affinity group areas. So we have a finance association, we have a military student association, and today we'll be highlighting our women in business association. 
And then of course our alumni network. Uh, we are the uh, one of the number one ranked programs in the world and we have an amazing alumni network that is pretty much the largest alumni network of any business school in the world at 120,000 plus living business school alumni. So you have a crazy large network that you can uh, access as you're looking to uh, advance your career. So moving on to the next slide, let's look at then the return on investment for the program. So like I said, we have the number one career services in the world, uh, according to the Financial Times in 2020. And 64% of our students have let us know that they have gotten a promotion either during the program or within uh, six months of graduating with an average salary increase of just about 30%. And most of our students have that post-grad salary of about 122K, although that can range pretty drastically depending on, of course, what field you're in. And then we were just uh, ranked the number one best online MBA program by Poets and Quants. And newly, we were just ranked uh, the, or uh, awarded the program of the year uh, from Poets and Quants as well. We're really proud of that. So moving on to the next slide, women in business. I wanna just kind of lay the foundation uh, for what our Women in Business Student Leadership Association is all about. And then again, later on, you'll hear from our panelists to really talk through what their experience has been in the Kelly Direct program. And you'll hear a, a little bit more about that Women in Business Student Leadership Association. Um, but Women in Business hosts monthly networking events and they have uh, panel presentations. So um, there's gonna be, of course, the, the student panel that's gonna follow. And then we have the Forte Partnership. And Forte is an organization separate from Kelly Direct, but you'll hear from one of the representatives from Forte in just a little bit. We're gonna hear from our Forte rep. Uh, so Ashley is going to give you a little bit more information on what it means to be a Kelly Direct student and also be a part of Forte. Thank you, Sarah. I really appreciate that. And I am super excited to be with you all today as you are on this journey, uh, looking at uh, potentially doing an MBA. Uh, as Sarah said, my name's Ashley. I work at Forte. I am the Associate Director of Pre-MBA and Professional Programs at Forte. Um, and prior to working at Forte, I spent over 10 years working in admissions. I worked at a business school uh, doing admissions uh, at the MBA level. So uh, very familiar with the path that you are all on today. So I'm really excited to talk a little bit about the work that we do at Forte and how that might influence your journey to an MBA program and certainly beyond as well. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is, is why this matters um, and, and give you a little background on how Forte came to be. So on the next slide, um, I am going to start with a story. So uh, this is, uh, you know, not necessarily a once upon a time fairy tale, but uh, really it starts um, in 2000. So there was a uh, study that came out of the University of Michigan, the Catalyst study, um, that was titled Women in the MBA. And it was um, really at that time, business schools looking at why there weren't more women in business school. So more uh, other professional schools, law schools, medical schools, were seeing about 50% women's enrollment business schools were looking at 26 or maybe 27 percent. Um, and the study found that there were a lot of reasons why women were not pursuing business school, were not pursuing an MBA. And one of the first things was um, there was a lack of understanding that an MBA could do anything beyond kind of traditional Wall Street. Um, so I'll make a reference um, on my next slide that, that some of you might might get depending on uh, your age. <laughs> um, the idea of, of greed is good. The, the uh, mantra from the movie Wall Street, that really didn't resonate with everyone. And it certainly didn't resonate with a lot of women. Um, if, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and that movie is way too dated, um, my next slide uh, has maybe a more um, uh, pertinent, uh, relevant reference to the Wolf of Wall Street. So not only was there this obstacle of the perception that an MBA was all about Wall Street, but really the study outlined four distinct barriers for women that were looking at business school, business careers, really business education. One of the big ones was a lack of female role models. Um, so over half of women cited that as uh, a reason, a barrier to pursuing business education. Um, there was also this idea that business education was incompatible uh, with a work-life balance so that working in business didn't work if you wanted any sort of work-life balance. 
Um, also, there was a lack of confidence in math and quantitative skills. So women often cited that. Um, about half of women cited that as a reason, a barrier to entry for business school. And finally, there was a lack of encouragement from employers. So women weren't getting any sort of signal from an employer that pursuing business education was a viable option. Uh, so, so what happened from that is actually a group of MBA programs got together uh, with a small group of companies. Um, they kind of gathered around the, the proverbial table, if you will, and started to really try and address these obstacles and also working to educate women about the power of an MBA degree, regardless of their industry, regardless of your undergraduate major, really regardless of your goals, that an MBA held a lot of power. So this kind of small group of companies and schools that got together, that's how Forte came to be. That's the, the story of Forte is um, from that, Forte really emerged as an organization and it has grown significantly since that conversation. So the next slide is actually a highlight of our over 50 MBA program partners, uh, Indiana being a, a great partner. Um, so we work with all of these schools as well as our corporate partners and nonprofit partners to do the work that we do, educating women um, throughout the, the process. So um, the next slide is, is just kind of an overview of that. So we work not only with business schools, with companies, but also with women at every stage in their career. And again, bringing it back to why we exist in the first place, it really is about educating women, connecting them. So we talked about the role models um, and then also really providing a community because women, um, if they weren't getting that encouragement from employers and they didn't have role models, um, we needed a way for women to connect with one another and support each other throughout all the stages of their career. Um, so the next slide is really about the work that we've, we've done and the work that we look to do. So Forte is about changing the status quo and about expanding this pipeline. So trying to get more women to consider business school, more women into business school, and more women into leadership positions. And now Forte has over 100,000 members. Uh, we have in total over 170 school and corporate partners. Um, Forte also works with our partner schools to award Forte fellowships, which are scholarships, merit scholarships each year. Um, and also we have a huge number of programs that we offer as well. Uh, so we have conferences, uh, workshops, um, programming that we do um, in conjunction with our great partners. So on the next slide, this is kind of an overview of all the different programming that Forte does and really how Forte supports women at any point in their career path. So we do work with women from college. So we have undergraduate partner schools that we work with providing information about, regardless of your major, um, what a career in business can look like. We then work with women. Many of you probably fall into this category where you're in the professional workspace now. Um, and then you might be looking at an MBA program. So how we can help educate you about an MBA, get you prepared for the application process. When you do uh, enter an MBA program, we offer a huge number of resources as well if you are at a partner school like Indiana. Um, conferences, we do uh, support for women's organizations on campus, um, a male allies program. We of course have our fellowship program. Um, that's okay, you can go on to the next slide. <laughs> um, and, and what I wanted to touch on specifically is just uh, depending on where you are in kind of the application process, um, that what I wanted to hone in on is, is kind of if you're in that pre-MBA space, so if you're considering an MBA program, uh, we do have a couple of different options. One is our launch program. So this is a program designed for women. If you need some support in the application process, um, working with schools is, an, is a wonderful opportunity. Um, you can work directly with schools. If you want kind of a, a bigger overview of the application process, including application prep, GMAT prep, um, information about financing your MBA, and again, building that community, we offer our launch program. Uh, we offer that the, the kind of flagship version of the launch program is a 10 month program that we do. So it's 10 months of prep. Um, you're in a community of women, typically the cohort is about 700 women that do that program together. And once you successfully navigate that program, the hope is you're able to, uh, to apply to business school. Um, you also receive some fee waivers from our partner schools. We also offer an on-demand version of that program. So it is entirely virtual, it's self-paced. 
Um, and if you're interested in that program, um, it's a great opportunity to help you kind of build a really strong application. Again, it, it also includes GMAT prep. Um, if that word is, is giving you anxiety, um, it's a good resource to use for the GMAT prep. And then again, helping you understand really that affordability piece as well. Um, and that is a huge barrier to women. So when we look at kind of where women are in business school now, we see many schools that have reached or are near gender parity in their program. But two of the big hurdles that women still face are the GMAT or standardized testing, um, as well as affordability. So those are our two big pieces that Forte helps to address. Um, and then my final slide, because I, I feel like I've teased a lot. Um, I talked a lot about all the programs that we offer. Um, if you're interested in uh, any of our programming, so I, I mentioned that we do the launch program, but we also have webinar series around your career. So um, next week we have a webinar. If you're interested in looking at a general management program, it's actually a panel of alumni who look at general management. We do a series across different industries. Um, you're welcome to join. Being a Forte member is free. You get access to a huge bank of webinars. Um, as I said, a number of different programming, depending on, on where you are. And if you have any questions, I've also listed my email here as well. I, I'd be certain, certainly happy to help answer that. But the work that Forte does is really made possible by our great partnerships um, with uh, schools, with programs like Kelly Direct. And so certainly really appreciate uh, being here today and sharing a little bit about the work that Forte does. And so I'll say, if any of you end up uh, at a partner school, we certainly hope you'll continue that journey with Forte um, and let us help you, help us, or let me try that again. Uh, let us support you as you go through an MBA program um, so that you can hopefully be a role model for women um, in the next generation of, of uh, MBA programs. So um, with that, I, I will say thank you and I'll, I'll stick around um, in case there's questions afterwards as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ashley. That was really helpful to, to hear about Forte. And again, Ashley, I'll, I'll stay here and we'll do some questions at the very end. But if you have questions right now, do feel free to put those into the Q&A so you don't forget about them. Uh, use that Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, pop in your question, and either Megan can answer it now via the chat or we'll answer it in real, real time at the end of the, the webinar. So right now I'd like to uh, introduce our three panelists. We have three of our current students with us today, Melissa, Emily, and Katie. So if you want to go ahead and share your, or uh, show yourselves and unmute yourselves. Awesome. Um, so all three of these women are uh, within our Kelly Direct MBA program and have had experiences with our Women in Business uh, Student Leadership Association, as well as just experience in our classes. Um, so I'm going to kind of turn things over to have them introduce themselves and give a little bit about their backgrounds professionally and educationally, and then we'll jump into some questions. I'm Melissa. Um, I'm actually the current president of Women in Business, so I'm really excited to be here for a women-specific event. Um, Kelly does a really great job supporting us, so excited to talk about that more in a minute. Um, I'm currently a senior planner at Bark. We're the company that does Bark Box and all those fun little job things. Uh, prior to that, I actually just moved jobs about a month and a half ago now, um, so Kelly kind of helped you know, platform me to the next level. Um, I was at Saks Fifth Avenue for about 10 years prior to that, um, also in a merchandising role. So it's been a really exciting past two years with Kelly and I'm ex excited to see what lies next at work with me. Wonderful, thanks Melissa. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Grendon. I'm um, also on the board of Women in Business. I've been with Kelly Direct a year now. So I'm coming up on my calendar year here in February. Um, my focus is on marketing. I've spent the last nine years as a sales executive with Abbott, so um, medical, uh, biotech, that kind of space. Um, prior to Abbott, I was a Kelly undergrad. Um, I was involved in the world, um, Kelly, um, in the in studied abroad and had a lot of those experiences that unfortunately we were not able to get during the COVID era. Um, but hopefully look forward to some of those experiences coming back in the, in the near future. Um, but I'm excited to answer any questions you guys might have about Kelly Direct and WIB. Great, thanks, Emily. 
Hi guys, um, I am Katie Surrett, and um, prior to Kelly Direct, I was also an IU undergrad. I um, was a speech and hearing sciences major. I graduated in 2015. Um, and yeah, Kelly Direct has been an incredible program. I'm very close to being finished. I actually just signed up for my last class, so I should be done um, May 13th it ends. So. Um, it's been it's been an incredible experience. I've been able to take advantage of um, awesome networking experience I never would have been able to otherwise. Um, so it's been it's been quite a journey. I'm excited to be here today and answer any questions you guys might have. Wonderful, thanks, Katie. So I think I'll go ahead and ask the first question. Although again, we might have some questions coming in via via the Q and A for you too that that Megan can pop in and, and ask you live. Um, but let's talk a little bit about just your experience in courses. So what has it been like networking, particularly with other females in the program? Um, what has that experience been like? And, and kind of what's, the, what's just the, that experience of being in courses and, and trying to network and meet people and make sure that you kind of build your community around you? We had the luxury of being at in-person Kelly Connect Week, but I think that you'll still have the same resources, even if it is virtual, once you start. Um, I was able to uh, meet on my first day our current KDSLA president, Emma, who at the time was in charge of WIB, and I knew right away that that was something that I wanted to be a part of. So um, very, it's very easy to join clubs like that, you know, beyond WIB even. Um, and so I was able to connect with WIB almost immediately. And I think that that network has really um, helped me kind of get this support system that I wouldn't have otherwise had. And I know that the other ladies in this group uh, feel the exact same way. We have a little group text that we're always like going back and forth. And it just feels so great to have these resources. You know, for example, Katie was in a completely different part of the program than I was when I started. And it was nice to like have her to tell me, oh yeah, you wanna take this, you don't wanna take this. Um, and, you know, now we find ourselves in some of the same classes even, and it's just nice to have that familiarity with a group of people and that it just, I mean, it just comes back down to support, I think, um, you know, joining a, a club like with. Yeah, I think right now, actually, Emily and Melissa and I are all in the same marketing class. <laughs> yeah, we are. Katie, we're actually even on the same team. Yeah, we're in the same team. <laughs> not get to choose which is awesome yeah it was random I was gonna say the same thing I, I remember um a, a person I was randomly a homework partner with and in, in my very first class sorry my cat's trying to be involved um my very first it was quantitative analysis was the first class I took in this MBA program and I randomly got paired up with somebody as a homework partner and he and I have stayed friends the entire program we have um, purposefully taken the same classes at the same time so that we can be homework partners again um, I have absolutely met people uh, and, and formed lasting relationships that I, I just wasn't expecting that, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't um, able to have the live Kelly Connect week, but I still feel that we're able to build strong relationships. Joining WIB was a great experience for me in the sense that we have this, this network and we have familiar faces in class. We can text each other back and forth during class and say, wait, can you, you know, what was that? Can you repeat that? Or if we have homework questions throughout the weekend, we go back and forth all the time. So I've really enjoyed WIB for many, many reasons, but one of them that I enjoy most is that familiar face in class and really that that buddy you can ask a silly question to um, and really have that, that safety net. And as Melissa mentioned, that support. And then we have our monthly um, networking nights that often turn to questions about this particular marketing class that we're all all seem to be in right now but we're all going through the same things at the same time so it's a wonderful experience to have that network while we have our our friends and our you know life outside of Kelly Direct it's so nice to have that group of women that are going through the exact same thing with you um, at the exact same time. So since all three of you have mentioned WIB, let's dig a little more deeply into WIB while we're at it. So you meant, you just mentioned, Emily, monthly networking nights. Um, what other types of things, what's, well, first of all, what is that? Like, what does that look like? And then also just what are the other types of things that WIB does as far as um, programming? Yeah, so our monthly networking night is the third Wednesday of every month. And we have a different topic each month that we review, um, 
and it's also just a time for us to get together and connect and it's in the evening. Um, so we really just talk what's going on in, in the world, in our lives. And, and then also we do have that little bit of structure um, for a focused topic. Yeah, and I, I think to Emily's point too, we've tried to be more flexible with the topics because I think during COVID we've had like this burnout of all day we're on meetings on Zoom and then you know, at the end of the day, yes, we want to see each other, but at the same time, we'd like it to not be as formal necessarily. So we try to kind of rotate it with, you know, TED Talks that really do, um, you know, hit a point that we'd like to discuss. But then on top of that, um, you know, other months might be a little bit more casual where we just kind of talk about the challenges maybe that we're having. I know that we had a really good discussion a few months ago, we had a few moms um, in the room and it was nice for them to connect because I think during this time in particular, it's just been um, incredibly challenging for mothers who have had to not only work from home, but also had to tutor their children from home. So, um, you know, it's, I think for them, it, it provided a really nice level of support and I don't have children, but I think it kind of opened my eyes to their own challenges um, that maybe I wasn't as aware of, or I, I knew it was happening, but I wasn't, um, aware that it was as much of a challenge as what I thought it was. So that's been really nice for all of us. Awesome. Thank you. So um, since you mentioned that there, you know, moms in the, in the program that you've talked to, I'm sure that all of you have differing backgrounds that other women that you've met in the program had differing backgrounds. Tell me a bit, a little bit about work-life balance. Uh, and we have a whole separate webinar specifically about work-life balance, but just tell me a little bit about how you've made this program work as you know, a, a female, strong, professional female who are working full time, also doing school, juggling just life commitments. What does that look like for you? Has it been doable? It's not easy. I, I would say it's, it's doable. <laughs> Some days are more doable than others. But um, yeah, I, the program is extremely flexible. A lot of classes take place in the evenings. So regarding the parenthood thing, I'm in the same boat as Melissa. I don't have children. It's, it's hard to say how that would affect maybe family dinner or any, you know, family time you might have. But um, as far as being a working professional, it is nice because it doesn't conflict with a typical nine to five schedule. Um, so we have that going for us anyways. Um, and classes, they generally, they just meet one night a week. So it's not, it's a sacrifice for sure. Uh, but it's it's a commitment that I, I, I go back to, it's doable. <laughs> yeah, I would also add that you know the schedule in advance. So you can choose your path. If you want to take one class one night a week, you can do that. Um, if you know that your work schedule is going to be a little bit lighter, you can take up to, th like right now I'm in three classes. So the work-life balance is, I'm laughing at that question right now. Like it's a little rough this week, but that's because we're just, you know, we have different projects going on right now and I'm, and I'm in three classes, but that's because I knew this winter we wouldn't be traveling for work yet. So I wanted to add more classes to my schedule so that when I do start traveling Monday through Thursday, I'll have a little bit lighter of a schedule. So that was absolutely intentional and strategic on my end. Um, the other thing, as Katie mentioned, we have class one night a week that's scheduled, and then you can map out your homework time, whatever makes sense for you. So for me, for, it, for example, I'm more fresh in the morning. I like to study early in the morning. So Saturday morning, this might sound crazy, Melissa and Katie, but I like to block out that 6 a.m. to noon time on Saturday mornings, get everything done so that I still can have a nice day off Sunday. Um, and if that if I can't get everything done in that you know time frame, at least I can map out what makes sense for my schedule on Sunday and Monday night before my classes start. So that's what works for me. Yeah, I would say that um, switching jobs a few months ago definitely uh, threw me for a loop because I really had my schedule down pat at Saks. Like I could do it in my sleep and um, that's probably why it was a good idea to move on to become a little bit more challenged. Um, but I, I think you know, now that I have more of a variable schedule with my new job and I feel like I need to be available all of the time, um, you know, just to kind of prove myself a little bit uh, there in, the, in these first few months, it's definitely um, been more regimented for me to try to carve out time, particularly I'm more of a weekend worker. I need to turn off my brain at the end of the day. So, um, you know, it's a miracle that I even make it to class at the end of the day sometimes just because I feel a little bit fried. Um, 
but you know, over the weekends, I'm not, uh, I'm a morning person, but it's a morning person for my own personal time to like go on a run or get a cup of coffee. So I feel you, Emily, but um, to do my work, I'm more of like a get it done all day Sunday and, and you know, go all after it then. So yeah, I, I think to everybody's point, like if you just carve out the right amount of time, like even with my schedule changing, it was still very manageable. Um, you know, it, I also was joking that I was just at the right age when I started the MBA program that I was starting to not really have much of a social life anyway. So, um, you know, I don't really miss um, much on the weekends, especially now during COVID. It seems like the perfect time to start because what are you really doing other than um, chilling at home? So, yeah, it's, it hasn't been, um, you know, I wouldn't be too intimidated by that part of it. Fantastic. Well, I know that we already have some questions coming in over the Q&A. So I'm actually going to turn things over to Megan Reese, um, and she's going to facilitate some of the questions that have been coming in over the chat and throw those out to our panelists. So Megan, take it away. Thank you. We have had some really good questions coming in. Um, one I'm really interested to hear from the three of you. Sumeya wants to know, what is uh, one thing that you wish you knew at the start of the program that you would pass along to others now? I think that I was um, intimidated by the stigma of an online program. Um, I came from, like, I think all three of us, we were um, undergrads at IU, so I already knew that Kelly was a fabulous program, and that part of it didn't bother me, but I felt like from certain friends, maybe the support was lacking just because they had this view of what, like, online should be, um, and Kelly has definitely proved itself otherwise. I kind of joke, haha, I'm the smart one that started, you know, right before a pandemic in an online program, just before everybody else went online. Um, but I think, I think it's just that whole stigma of getting over that and being proud to be a Kelly and knowing that your education is, um, you know, just as important to you as someone in a full-time program. And you're going to get just as much, if not more, because now you're in an environment where you're learning to work virtually. So I know that in the beginning of COVID, when we suddenly had to be forced to work from home, you know, I had coworkers that really struggled with that. And I was like, this is just another day. Like I, I can get through this. I'm used to doing classes and group projects and, you know, collaborating across different types of, of people, um, you know, through Kelly. So I think that that's a real um, advantage that I wasn't really expecting to find in it. I would say that it's, don't be afraid to reach out to someone on Canvas. Like when I started in my core one was my first term in Kelly and I was nervous to reach out to people or make friends. Um, but since then, when people reached out to me on Canvas, which is like our hub for all of our, um, it's like a portal where all of our school materials on, that's where we have the syllabuses and, and things like that. Uh, you also have a list of all the people in your classes. So when recently, actually over the weekend, someone reached out to me from Canvas who I'd never chatted with or had a group project with, and she just wanted a different perspective on her Excel homework. And I was so flattered. And I thought, you know what, we got on the phone, we talked through it, and it was a great way to make a new friend outside of a student organization. So don't be afraid to reach out. People are really happy to um, help each other out, whether it be with a homework assignment or actually, and even last week, someone reached out to me about a job at Abbott that they found on a job board. So both perspectives, I would say reach out to people. Everyone would love to help. It's definitely a, a warm environment. Yeah, I would say um, the one thing I would add to that, I certainly agree with Emily and Melissa um, 100%. Um, something Ashley said really resonated with me um, when I was deciding whether or not I was going to actually go through with this, like, you know, get this party started. Um, I was like, what business do I really have getting an MBA? I was kind of stuck on speech and hearing sciences. That's not business. Um, I, I was, you know, at the time I had just started working for Roche, which is pharmaceutical. So I kind of um, started to open my eyes up to the business of healthcare. So really, regardless of your undergraduate experience, regardless of your industry, regardless of your goals, just like Ashley said, um, there's value to be found here for sure. Awesome. Thank you for all being so candid. We've had some nice comments coming in, thanking you for, uh, you know, uh, uh, addressing the stigma associated with online MBA programs and thanking you. Um, Becky asked a really good question. What do you feel has been the biggest benefit to your career so far? Well, mine's easy because I just moved jobs, but I will say that um, 
it Kelly kind of I don't want to use the word forced, but it is kind of forced because you have exposure to all these different subjects all of a sudden and you start to realize what you really care about. Um, for me, that was I love strategy and I love to be able to affect the business that I work for um, in a very uh, substantial way where I can actually see my impact. And I wasn't really quite getting that at Saks anymore, um, a little bit burnt out on it. So, you know, it was great doing my research, finding what really mattered to me. And that's how I ended up at Bark. And that is really attributed to um, Kelly kind of opening my eyes to that. I think you're surrounded by driven people, people with ambition, people who, um, like you said, Melissa, really open your eyes to the possibilities. And um, I'm, I'm really better at weeding through things. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I, nope, I don't want that. And um, it's, it's been helpful in that respect. <laughs> I think it also helps you see things that are going on in in the news and with a different perspective. So for example, we, I, a lot of our cohort jokes that we've had the COVID MBA because COVID has been going on throughout our, um, our entire pro, our entire program. And so you can see it from a supply chain perspective. And it's something that I might not have thought about, you know, if I wasn't in this program and in supply chain classes at the same time. And then like yesterday with the, um, GameStop, you know, cry, what's going on with that? I wouldn't have thought about it from the same perspective um, that we opened up our, our class last night chatting about it. So it's just a fun place to have like-minded discussions about current events that you might not otherwise have with your, your peers or your friends um, outside of the Kelly Direct program. Well, and it's helpful if you don't necessarily know a lot about stocks, you suddenly have a whole group of people who can explain it to you. <laughs> Um, but I think to that point, too, just thinking about it, I came into it, I've worked in retail for the past 10 years, I came into it a little bit intimidated by um, those that I viewed as maybe in a slightly more professional career path in terms of like finance, accounting, and all of that. And I will say, even like being right next to them in finance and accounting classes, it's been really rewarding to kind of reaffirm that, um, you know, I do have those skills as well, even if they haven't been as sharpened over the past 10 years. So, um, you know, that's been really nice to uh, get out of the program as well. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, Emily, you kind of touched on this, but we have a question specifically for you. Um, how is it working in the biotech space while also studying for your MBA? Uh, this particular year or just in general? Sure. Yeah. I mean, this, this is a crazy year for, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been an incredible year. Uh, we've had a lot of things to balance. I think the supply chain example is the biggest. Um, when the, when COVID first hit, we had to open, um, the ship in New York city. We had it here. I'm based in Chicago. We had a, um, McCormick center here in Chicago needed to open overnight. And there was another, um, make sure another pop-up hospital down in Florida. Well, with that, um, the, the product that I manufacture, or the product that my team manufactures and that I sell um, needs to be as associated with, if you're on a vent, you need this product. So we needed to make sure we had enough product on the ship and the new hospitals before they could even open. Well, that doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we had to figure out how to get that product where it needed to be. So just for, from a supply chain perspective, really learning, okay, what's the throughput? What's the, um, what's the capacity, which are, honestly, I was in a supply chain class at that time. So I would not have thought of those terms. Um, and it wasn't my responsibility to come up with that strategy for our team, but I was on the team that needed to execute it here for the McCormick Place Hospital. So it, it was going hand in hand. It sounds super cliche that what you learn in class, you're doing that next day at work. That was a perfect example of I. We really were talking about these, um, this crisis and and how do we apply it? And then um, learning that lecture that same night in class. More recently, um, we had our national sales meeting last week or January 11th, I guess two weeks ago. And our CEO came up on stage announcing our growth strategies for the year. I had written a similar answer for a midterm exam that Sunday. So I'm laughing at um, how much it relates to what we're doing in class and then what I'm hearing 
from our leadership team at work. And it almost sounds too cliche, but it is. it has been my experience. There's many more examples I can share how it relates, um, it goes hand in hand. So hopefully that answers your question, but if there's a follow-up, please let me know. Yeah, thank you, Emily. That was very comprehensive. Um, I do wanna let attendees know we've got we still have some really great questions coming in for the student panelists. If you have any questions for Ashley from Forte, go ahead and throw those in the Q&A as well. Ashley's still around to answer questions. Um, and for our student panel, um, Robin is concerned about quantitative work. So did any of you come into the program and didn't have you know, hard science math skills or come from a non-business related background? Um, you know, did you st struggle with quantitative or how did you tackle that? Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, definitely not a strong math person. Um, and I'll be honest, I had to make a couple attempts at finance. It was not something that came easy to me, but um, I was able to take advantage of, um, again, kind of networking resources, people who I'd met who had taken the class, offered some great advice. Um, I was able to get a tutor. Um, so that really did help turn things around for me. Um, there's, there's ways to do it. It was not easy. Accounting was, again, difficult. But if you're, I learned if you're straightforward with your professors, they're going to work with you. Um, they they want to see you succeed. Um, and they definitely want to make sure you're understanding this, even if it's just in a managerial capacity. My accounting instructor knew that I wasn't going to go be a bookkeeper or be an accountant for any particular business, but he wanted to make sure that I had a working understanding of it, working knowledge, and would recognize an income statement if it came across my desk. So um, it's it's doable. <laughs> and I think that a lot of people are in, just naturally intimidated. Like even if you do have like, I have a little bit of a background in it just from being an undergrad, but um, you know, I think, and I'm not implying that you weren't keeping up with it, Katie, because I'm sure you were, but I know for accounting in general, like if you get a week behind, you're going to be in trouble. Like you need to keep up with your work. Um, and it's manageable in that way, because it is pretty clear, like, this is what you need to do this week. This is what you need. But since it all builds off of it, you're going to get lost if you can't keep up. So um, that would just be my only advice is particularly in those types of classes is just make sure that you understand what is being asked of you each week so that you can keep up. Um, Cause that'll help set you up for success. Awesome. Thank you. And I do want to remind every everyone attending that we do have the accounting primer to help prep you for that. Um, and Madeline has a really great question um, that I'm interested to hear the answer to from all of you. What has been the best thing about joining Cali Direct? <laughs> it's, just these, it's just these wonderful ladies. Um, no, but honestly, I'm very surprised at how much networking was involved with um, the Katie program. Once again, just being on campus, you in that first week, and like I said, I'm sure there are similar virtual opportunities now, so I wouldn't worry about that, but I came back to my hotel room every night and I was exhausted because I'm really an introvert. And so networking with everyone became like, oh, this is overwhelming, but it was so good for me because I hadn't done that in so long that I really needed to, um, you know, get back out there and talk to people outside of my own industry and, um, you know, learn new things. So that was really um, surprising and rewarding to me. Um, but then in all seriousness, I do really think it's important to take advantage of the KDS SLAs. Um, even if you decide not to join us in WIB, you know, there's some place for you out there because we do have so many opportunities and um, it's just, we have, you know, we have a very familiar set of faces that join us every WIB Wednesday. And it's nice to be in a class where you see that familiar face kind of to what we were talking about in the beginning. So that's definitely been the most rewarding. I know that Katie and Emily, I'll continue to talk to you after you graduate, like we are stuck together. So um, that it just is something that I don't think you would expect out of an online program, but I definitely got those friendships that I would have expected out of a, a, an on-campus program. I absolutely agree. I think the, mo the biggest reward is the networking and the relationships you make coming from this program. Um, I can't say enough about joining the KDSLA program. It, it, as Melissa mentioned, you have friends in class, you have buddies, you have that person you can ask a silly question to. It's it's been the most rewarding part of the program. Um, 
On an academic note, I'm currently in a course called Navigators, which helps you um, evaluate your values and what do you really want for your next five, 10 years, one year, five year, 10 year plan. And that's really helped me reassess um, what's most important to me. Do I wanna take that next promotion? I'm already traveling four days a week. How can I be home anymore? How can I be home less? And, and what does that look like? And, and really helps evaluate what's most important to you versus just that, that pay increase. So to me, that's also been a really nice reflection and almost forced reflection that I wouldn't do naturally. I, um, I definitely agree both with Melissa and Emily. Um, I can't emphasize enough the networking is so unexpected for an online degree. The one thing I would add, um, I have had occasion to take advantage of the graduate career services that's offered. Um, just a little bit, we're still working, um, but I am kind of now searching for, you know, my next opportunity, what I want to do next as I'm, as I'm wrapping up this MBA, you know, I, I kind of, I do want to change. So um, that's, that's one additional thing that I have uh, started taking advantage of that's really um, quite an asset. Thank you, Katie. That actually touches on the next question. And I'm so sorry. We're, we've got so many great questions. I love how uh, active our Q&A section is. Um, Sumeya wants to know, did you get an MBA to switch career paths or to advance your current track? And Katie, you touched on uh, utilizing graduate career services. How did, how did Kelly Direct help you accomplish those goals? Well, um, I, I think my goals changed, honestly, throughout the course of this program. I think I learned, you know, not only the course content, but I, I kind of learned a, a bit more about myself as we went along here. And um, I, I am in the process of changing um, jobs. I, I, my, my time spent at Graduate Career Services, this was again, almost a year ago, I was at um, the Kelly Connect Week in March, uh, right when COVID started, we all got sent home early. Um, but I, I met with Terry um, and she offered a lot of really good advice. I, so I guess I didn't set out wanting to change. I set out kind of wanting to move up in my current, at my current company, but here we are. <laughs> Awesome, thank you. Um, we've also got a really interesting question from Sumeya wondering, uh, could you speak a little bit about whether you mentioned you were getting an MBA at work? How did that maybe affect things, if, if at all? Yeah, my team knows I'm pursuing my MBA. It's been a goal of mine um, for, for many years. It's been on my growth plan. Um, as a personal goal, I don't necessarily need it to, to grow in the sales career within Abbott. Um, it certainly helps within sales leadership or if I make that transition into marketing. Um, so it's been on my on my goals, although I kept putting it off and I kept putting it off. And then finally one day I, I got actually an email from Kelly and I applied and it, it was a great I it was great to actually make that step. For me it was um, my team knew I wanted to pursue my MBA. So when I said I applied, I'd like your letter of recommendation. My director said, okay, I'm I've been waiting for this. Um, so he's been helpful in, in coaching me through it. I'm very familiar that I need to end my work day at five when I have classes that night um, and they've been flexible. So my team has been very supportive. Yeah, I agree. Everyone at Roche knew what I was doing. Um, they have a pretty significant tuition reimbursement um, program as part of, you know, the benefits for working for them. So I was pretty open about taking advantage of that. And um, pretty much everyone in my office, I even had people coming to me for advice because they wanted to take advantage of the same thing. So everyone kind of knew, go ask Katie about that. I was a little bit different on the boat. Uh, my industry is inherently not as supportive, I think, toward MBAs. Um, I actually had to be pretty careful when I was telling my former company about it. Um, you know, there's no such thing as tuition reimbursement in that world, nothing like that. Um, I did find though that there were low key hidden people in the organization who were very supportive. So once, um, you know, it, it traveled very gossipy type of org. Like once it traveled around um, and made it to the people that were supportive, they approached me and told me that they were proud of me and you know thought that it was a good idea. 
but yeah, it was definitely more of a struggle on my end and something that I actually had to keep kind of secret at Saks just because I think that there was, um, you know, kind of an intimidation almost from senior management, you know, why, why does this girl want to do this? Like, is she just trying to get ahead and all of that? So, you know, happy day. I'm at Bark now who is very supportive and they loved hearing about my MBA and my interview. And I, you know, frequently like say something that I've learned in one of my classes and they, they just eat it up. So, you know, there's, there's always, um, you know, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> so I guess that's what Bark is for me, but yeah, you, if you struggle, you know, you're not alone. I completely get it. Um, because it was, it was definitely difficult in the beginning. Thank you all. We have one more question for you. I won't keep you too long. Um, what has been your greatest challenge during the program and how did Kelly Direct help you through it? It's a tough question. <laughs> you mean besides finance? <laughs> finance <laughs> definitely fits the bill. <laughs> I, I think... Um, I've had good and bad group project situations. Um, I would be lying if I said that every single one of them is a perfect world because, you know, obviously the ones where I've gotten to pick my team end up a little bit better because you kind of know the personalities that you're getting into it with and can manage personalities that way, but not to be too corny about it, but obviously like from working with people that maybe aren't part of what you're used to working with, it definitely helps expand um, your mind and your frame of reference to what they're going through. So I think, um, you know, even though I, I've wanted to pull out my hair in a particular group project recently, um, I just need to look at it in more of a positive way and understand that, um, you know, it's making me stronger for maybe work relationships down the road if I come across someone that's been a little bit more challenging of a personality. That's a good way to put it. Some of them are random. Some of them you do get to pick. So you kind of get both experiences. You, you're not always going to get along with everyone. That's a fact of life. You're going to have to work with different people, difficult people even sometimes. So it is nice to kind of have that real world experience in the classroom setting, but then you also get the benefit of picking and choosing some, some classes. It's it just as up to the professor, but yeah. You know. Yeah, I had a challenge um, in one of my classes as well. I worked with my advisor um, to understand how I can get through it. And she said, you know, try to try to stick it out as one of the classes in the core. So you really need to get, you want to get through the core so that you can go on to your elective courses. Um, but my buddy from my core one group project and I really worked together. We had a study group. We studied before the test. Um, she would say things to me like, go for a walk, Emily, it's it's late, you really need to take a break. So it goes back to that networking and she's also involved in KDSLA pretty um, intensively as well. And so it really goes back to just that network, that support team, um, you really can, you can get through it. There, are, It's not gonna be, everything's not gonna be super easy, but really building that team and that support system. Fantastic, thank you so much to all three of you, Melissa, Emily, and Katie. Thank you again to Ashley from Forte for being here. And also thank you to all of you for attending. Uh, it was great to have you. Uh, thanks to Megan for facilitating all of your questions. If you do have more questions about Kelly Direct, uh, you'll be receiving an email from Megan pretty soon. But the email address that you could send uh, any of your questions to is right down there in the corner, kdirect at iu.edu that will get to Megan and she'll be able to either answer the question herself or triage it to the person who can answer your questions. And again, if you have questions uh, for any of our panelists, email that KDirect email address and we'll make sure to put you in touch with folks. Thanks for spending time with us today. And uh, if you have any more questions, we will look forward to hearing from you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. <laughs>